Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. Today, let's talk about comparisons. And specifically, I want to talk about when we are comparing ourselves with our colleagues who are our quote unquote competitors and they're signing clients, but we're not. Okay. And before we dive in for today, I just want to invite you to join us inside the Sales Club program. So if your goal this year is to build a coaching business and coaching career that you're proud of, I would love to support you in making this happen. So we are currently accepting clients inside our signature program, the Side Hustle Club, which is a six-month weekly one-to-one program, which also has weekly group coaching, monthly workshops, and a very awesome private client portal with a lot of resources and our signature curriculum. So the specific skills that we focus on inside the program include becoming known for your unique thought leadership, learning how to soft launch your coaching offer and ultimately sign clients and building a uniquely differentiated brand. So if these are skills that you want to learn, then come join us inside the program. So for all of the details and to apply, you can head on over to CherylTheory.com slash program. And after receiving your application, we will book a sales call to chat more before onboarding you inside. And I absolutely cannot wait to see you inside the site hustle club. Okay, so with that, let's now transition into the topic for today, comparisons, and also being triggered when your colleagues are signing clients, but you're not. All right, let's be honest here. I know that all of us have compared ourselves with our competitors, quote unquote, and colleagues in the industry who are selling or doing just similar things as us, right? And especially like if we can kind of identify some sort of like surface level similarities between us and the other person, right? Like maybe you both started around the same time in your business and it seems like they're making more money than you, or maybe you demographically, culturally look the same, right? And on the surface, it looks like you you guys are direct competitors because you look similar or maybe just the brand that you've curated, You it both feels similar, but it seems like your colleague is signing more clients than you, right? And now it might feel like even though you might really like the other person, you genuinely respect them and what they do, it still feels like you're not good enough. You're just not as good as them and they're better than you at this and that it just feels like their life and business just feels so much easier. They're signing clients much more easily and so on. And perhaps you already know that like intellectually, you can kind of rationalize this and say like, oh, but I don't really know what's going on inside their business. I just only know what they're showing us on social media. Like you can kind of like rationalize and intellectualize why your your comparisons are really just based on assumptions. But let's be honest, it can still feel pretty shitty when other people are signing clients and you're not, right? And I think for many of us, we also intellectually are aware of the consequences of comparisons, right? Like I think for a lot of us, comparisons take up a lot of time and cognitive energy. Like we would go on Instagram and we would just like consume all of our colleagues stuff and just pay so much attention to them. And that in itself is such a huge time and emotional energy drain. And it might also make us feel more desperate for clients. It might make us feel like we need to prove that I'm just as good as the other person. And then now we would just be wallowing in scarcity and thinking that the other coaches are taking away all of our potential clients. And it's just feeling like, oh, there's only a limited number of clients and someone else got them already. I can't get them. Right. So I first want to spend some time in this episode just kind of like unpacking why comparisons is such a common phenomenon as we're building our online coaching businesses and personal brands. And then we're going to spend some time going through some practical tips on how to manage comparisons and feeling triggered by your colleagues. So why are comparisons happening? Well, first, I think there's definitely something cultural at play here. I think for a lot of us, perhaps more in certain cultures, we feel like there's not enough room for all of us to sit at the table, right? And when we think that there's only one of us that can make it to the top, right, that that kind of like creates that competition environment in our heads, right? Because I think for a lot of us, there's this underlying theme where when we were growing up, comparing ourselves and pinning ourselves against the other person, not because like we have a malicious intent against the other person, but it's just because of the environments that we grew up in, right? So I think for a lot of us, comparisons definitely have some sort of cultural roots. We were taught to compare and compete. And it's very normal that now that we're building our own online businesses and personal brands, we're literally like, doing the same thing unintentionally, right? Because we've been brought up to think that other people and their success 
is going to take away from our own, right? So that's why I think it's first important to point out that comparisons is a, uh, a type of like behavior that's very natural and common and it makes sense why it's happening now that we're building businesses right so just to drill in this particular point home I just want to uh, share some of the research that I was that I, I was looking through when I was preparing the script for this episode right so I was actually looking at some studies like actual research studies that were done on the culture of social comparisons and the most prominent research paper that came up during my my, my brief research here was called The Culture of Social Comparisons, which was published in 2018 by Matthew Baldwin and Thomas Musweiler. I hope I'm pronouncing their names correctly. And it was published inside the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences Journal, which, by the way, it is a very, very prestigious and highly cited journal. Anyways, so this paper, it was examining how our environment will influence the extent to which we look to others for affiliation, self-esteem, or indicators about what we should be thinking, how we should be feeling, or how we should be acting. And this study basically found that the people who live in quote-unquote tight cultures, which means that there are clear social norms and uh, there are punishments for anyone who deviates from those norms, right? The people who grew up in these sort of tight cultures are more likely to compare themselves with peers so that they can figure out how they themselves should think, feel, and act. So if you were to extract this main nugget from the study and apply it to our coaching business, I would say that because there's often such tight norms surrounding what it means to be a successful online coach or, or entrepreneur, we've unknowingly created these expectations for what a successful coach or entrepreneur is supposed to do or what they're not supposed to do. So it makes sense why a lot of us building our online coaching businesses, we basically compare ourselves to others because like, we worry that if we deviate from the norm, we won't have a successful business. And that's a lot of risk right there, right? And so the risk in our heads is basically that if we don't look or sound like other successful people in the industry, then we won't get a piece of the pie. We're going to miss out on clients. And that's a risk that we're not willing to take, right? We're not willing to deviate from these entrepreneur norms, right? And I also think that this ties in nicely with another, like, another element here at play, which is that perception of scarcity, right? Specifically, scarcity of clients who will pay you. It's kind of like university acceptances, right? Like there's only a limited number of people who will get accepted every year to that one school. And if one person gets in, that means it's a lesser chance for the rest of us to get that remaining acceptances. But the thing is that it's just not how it works in the online coaching space. Let's think about it. Like really think about the reasons why that might not be true. Right. So first, for most of us, if we want to build a coaching business that makes, let's say, six figures a year, and let's say your offer is $2,500, then that means you need 40 clients a year. And they're sure are like they're sure as heck are 40 people on this globe every year who can benefit and find immense value from working with you. And it is your job to get in front of those people and continue to show up for them. And sure, like maybe 40 clients a year seems really out of reach right now for you. So it is your job to continue honing your skills so that you can get in front of those 40 people every year. But the main point here is that the pool of clients, it's not as scarce and limited as we think. It's not like you and your colleagues are both fighting for the pool of like 10 people, right? And also remember, clients can work with more than one coach. They can work with you and your colleagues, why? Well, because you and your colleagues, we all bring something different to the table and your clients might want to learn from different approaches and viewpoints and work of different coaching styles. Like that is a very, very possible scenario that can happen, right? So all that to say, even if we've had this like culturally ingrained mindset of competition, I just want to offer this gentle reminder that as we're building this online coaching business, like, yes, we can understand that our our natural inclination to compare, it has cultural roots and it makes sense, but we don't have to carry that mindset into the business. So that's the first thing. Now, another really practical explanation for why like comparisons are happening so much for us is that, well, we are all painting this picture of it is easy on the internet, 
right? Like whether it is intentionally or like completely unintentional, it's likely that we've all been posting things that make other people believe like, wow, it's so much easier for them. Like we've all likely done it ourselves, right? We've all probably posted something that makes people believe that it is easier for us because we're painting the highlight reel of our journeys, right? And quite frankly, the intention behind like whether someone is painting a highlight reel intentionally or not, like that's not really the issue here. But because like we're all building a brand and business after all, and there is intention behind every single post, every single touch point, no matter what, right? So everything we post on Instagram, for example, it's really for marketing purposes. Even if you're not building a business, people are posting something that will maybe they want to paint a certain picture of themselves on the internet, even if they're not entrepreneurs, right? So that's besides the point. So that's why focusing on the person's intention for posting on Instagram, it's not really the the relevant conversation to have, but rather I think it is more so about like, it is more relevant for us to remember that for every single person, there are both highs and lows. There are both highs and lows in the journey, right? I mean, again, let's let's use a, a university metaphor here. Let's think about college and university education. Like on their websites, on their brochures, it looks amazing. The college experience, it looks pretty damn cool, right? Like they talk about how amazing their research institutions are, how good their rankings are, and they just... Their universities are so good at painting the beautiful picture of what it's like to be a student at their campus. But for those of us who have gone to college, I think we all know that it's not like that's not the reality, right? Like that's not the actual student experience, right? And do we expect universities to talk about the actual issues that students face on their campuses? Hmm. Likely, no, like we are, we as consumers probably don't even expect the university to talk about the student loan debts that happen to their students or the terrible mental health that we all go through when we're in university, right? Like all we see are parties and like really nice dorm rooms and classrooms, but no one, like no university is going to paint the real picture on their websites and brochures. And we, we as the students, we as the consumers, we don't expect that either, right? So all that to say, the same concept applies to you and your colleagues who are building your online coaching businesses and brands on the internet, right? Like, I mean, even for something that's like Instagram stories, which is marketed as a feature on the Instagram platform, where you get to share more of the real life or behind the scenes of your life, like that's not really the case. Instagram stories isn't this behind the scenes. It's not as like, it's not really what it, was positioned to be right every one of us even for non-business owners and non-coaches we're all very selective of what we share and don't share on instagram stories it's all marketing right it is it's just a glimpse into someone's life and it's not the full picture so i wanted to really take some time to like lay the ground for this episode and talk about why comparisons is such a natural and common phenomenon especially for those of us building an online brand and online business, I really wanted to just give some perspective into why this is so like such a natural phenomenon. So now that we've talked about that, I want to spend some time unpacking a bit on how we can work through the negative emotions that often arise when we are making comparisons with our colleagues. So the first thing I want to talk about is having the awareness that this is really normal and don't shame yourself. All right. So first and foremost, we need to be aware of where we are self-shaming ourselves for having comparisons with others. Because for me, when I was really seeped into comparisons and then to add on to the the layer of like comparisons and, and jealousy, I was also really ashamed for like even comparing myself with others because like I really do like a lot of people that I I meet on the internet, right? I really do respect and genuinely like the people that I was comparing myself to. I think that they're, they really do amazing work and they have a much needed message. And as a result, I was like, Cheryl, why are you comparing yourself? Why are you feeling this way? You shouldn't be feeling this way. And I was really beating myself up, right? So first, we have to recognize that we are not bad people for comparing ourselves or feeling jealousy or envy towards others who are doing similar work as ourselves. We need to acknowledge that we are human beings and comparing is normal. Like really, it is very 
a very normal human behavior to compare. So it's not necessarily the comparisons itself that's the problem, but it's when we make that comparison mean something about ourselves, like that's more of the issue that can bring up a lot more problems than we intend to. So that's why the first part of this episode, we spent so much time just like unpacking why comparisons come up and why it's such a normal experience. So all that to say, please be aware of where you are shaming yourselves and let's try to untether from that, okay? Now, the second thing is I would really want us to start leaning into believing your own unique thought leadership and quality of work. Because what often happens is that when we are so clouded in our own comparisons, what happens as a result is that we're only focused on the areas of like overlap between ourselves and the other person. And we only zone in on like the common ground. And we tell ourselves that that other person is better than us when it comes to that one particular thing that we both have in common. So the question I want us to think about is, in what ways are you different from the people that you are comparing yourself to? Like really, really answer this question. In what ways are you different from the people that you are comparing yourself to? For me, when I was working through my own belief that I have my own unique thought leadership and was working on grounding back to what is uniquely different about me and what is uniquely innate in me, I remember that I was also simultaneously working on my belief of I am good at what I do. I have people to help. I got work to do. Right. So I first had to learn to validate myself and the work that I do rather than hoping that signing clients will be the validation that I was so deeply craving. Right. Because when you step into your power and really step into your own unique thought leadership, like no one else can do it like you. So that is why the second tip I want to offer here is really work on strengthening your belief in your unique thought leadership and strengthening your belief that what you do is important. It is needed. It is good quality work as a coach and entrepreneur, because when you can validate yourself first, you don't need to compare yourself and use others to gauge whether you're doing good or not. You no longer feel validated or invalidated by your comparisons when you can validate yourself first. All right. Now, number three. Comparisons can often unearth what it is that you think you need in order to be successful, but it may not actually be required, right? Because when you're triggered by someone else's success, whatever that particular metric of success that you're evaluating yourself and the other person on, like when you're judging yourself and feeling pretty shitty about yourself, like really pay attention to what is it that you think you're you're lacking supposedly, Right? Because let's say we flip the switch and say that you you feel like you already have that success, like that metric that you're you're comparing yourself on. Like if that's the case, and now you're looking at your colleague who's hitting that benchmark of success as well, you will probably feel happy for the other person and cheering them on. Right. Like if you feel like you have that thing already and the other person also has that thing, then you would probably be like cheering both of yourselves on. But if you feel like you're lacking on that thing and then seeing someone else have that thing, it's going to trigger something in you and thinking that you're lacking something. So that's how we can tell like, oh, this is something that I think I'm lacking and I must acquire this or increase it in myself in order to get that same success that my colleague is getting, right? So here's an example. Let's say, let's just say you're thinking that your colleague is more visually attractive than you, meaning they have the looks that you don't have supposedly, okay? Or they have like an image of like being more put together, more mature, more sophisticated than you. And you think that they're exuding a certain air of elegance that you don't have. Okay, just some examples here. Or maybe like, or maybe, maybe, maybe the other person is a full-time entrepreneur and you're currently doing this on top of a full-time job and you think that they have more time resources and you don't, okay? So now, when you notice that you're you're feeling triggered and comparing yourself to them because you think that you're lacking the looks or you're lacking the time, like this could really be a moment for you to assess whether these quote unquote shoulds should even be a should in the first place and whether this should is aligned with who you are and how you even want to build your business. Because some entrepreneurs, like maybe like their visuals is an integral part of their brand. Like maybe they really do care about beauty right? Whatever that means for themselves or their brand online. But to others, it is out of integrity to be really nitpicky about their visuals and their imagery or their appearance. It's just not how they operate. And it is totally off brand if they are really caught up in it, 
And it would be to- totally like out of alignment if they were to prioritize visuals and appearance over their other core values. So I just want to offer this perspective and just encourage us to start paying attention to whenever we're comparing ourselves and thinking that someone else has something that we're not like. And, and that's the reason that apparently they're signing clients and you're not like really start to pay extra attention to whether that is even true or not. And whether, more importantly, whether it is in alignment with your own values or not, right? And if it's a no to both questions, especially a no to the second question, i.e. it is not in alignment with your values, if that's the case, then let's start to unbind from the inner pressure to be better in this area. That said, if it is a yes to the second question, like if it is actually a value of yours to do better or be better in this particular area, then let's move forward to the last tip for today, which is comparisons may also unearth where you think you're not meant for something, but you have this deep inner desire for that thing. So this shows where your work lies moving forward. So oftentimes it can be super painful when there's like certain qualities or experiences or characteristics that you want to embody or create for yourself and you deeply want it. But at the same time, it feels like you just can't have it. And if that's the case, no wonder comparisons are so triggering and painful for you. But here's what I will say. If you know that there's something that you really, really, really want, and it's not necessarily because you think you should have it or that you should do it or you should be like that, but rather you you genuinely, deeply want that for yourself, then that's a sign to let's get to work. Like, let this inspire you to take audacious action. Like, seriously, let this empower you and drive you to be absolutely fanatical at creating it for yourself, right? And here's the thing. (laughs) I want to just share um, a really funny cat meme I saw recently, which I think really ties it together. So I saw this picture, this meme of a cat, like sitting on top of a little pedestal. And the pedestal initially had like a little statue on top of it. But in the the, the meme, it, it said that the cat had knocked over the statue and it's now replaced the statue with himself or herself. And the caption for the meme was, she knocked over the little statue, statue so she could be the statue. Like that is the energy I want us to be in if tip four is resonating with you, right? Like if there's something that you deeply want to create, if you want to be the statue, then go like, let's get to work and become the statue, (laughs) right? So I hope that really ties in the picture nicely. And let's all borrow this audacious self-belief and audacious action taking of this cat meme, okay? All right, so let's, summarize the tips before we conclude this episode so tip number one was have the awareness that it is super super normal that comparisons is happening but please do not shame yourself for having comparisons for experiencing comparisons tip number two is to really work on your belief in your own unique thought leadership and the quality of your work tip number three is to remember that comparisons can often unearth what it is that you think you need in order to be successful, but it may not actually be required at all. And it may actually be not within your values to to be so or to do so. And tip number four is that on the other hand, comparisons may also unearth where you think you're not meant for something, but you have this like genuine deep desire for that thing. And this shows where your work is moving forward. All right. Okay. So with that, let's wrap up the episode for today. And remember, comparisons are so natural and it makes sense why we feel some type of way when other people are signing clients and we feel like we're behind compared to them. Like that makes complete sense. But that said, I hope that you will not let the comparisons be the reason why you slow yourself down and your business down. Please take some time to really marinate on the tips that we discussed today and actually put them into practice and apply apply these tips. And I really hope that this episode was helpful to you and gives you the encouragement to keep going. Anyways, thank you so, so much for tuning into today's episode. And remember the comparisons are highly natural. There's no need to shame yourself over such natural human behaviors. And I hope that you'll borrow some of the tips that we discussed today and let's continue creating amazingness in our life and business. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work.